Oh, what was your message to them as you told them to buy for the Oh, ultimately, the, you know, we can pat ourselves on the back for a job well done getting ourselves to 94 points. But ultimately, 94 points wasn't good enough. And I stand here giving this addressing you today in the first, second week of April when uh, in past years we've been doing this in May and June. And it, I always say judges after 82. And it was, uh, it was a hell of a run we made. Uh, 94 points can get you in most years. Uh, it got you in in the other conference. It just didn't get us in uh, because you know, there were eight other teams that um, did better than that, and it's you, you, we can't accept that. Um, ultimately, it's it's about winning in this league, and uh, you take a lot of the other positives that have come out of this, and from our owner to a fan base that's just rabid about hockey, and as I said last night, a love affair between the team and, and the city. But they want to see playoff hockey. And over the last two years, we've brought families together and friends and, you know, our watch parties. And it's all been kind of part of our culture. And not to have that this year is, uh, is tough to swallow. Um, so it's you, – you look at this season and think it's good. It just wasn't good enough. And that has to change. And um, we've we've set a standard here that is extremely high. And uh, I guess this was, you know, to me, this is our mulligan. And now we got to come back next year with, you know, a renewed focus and and understand there's going to be competition for jobs. Um, and and we got to be better. That's it. John, do you look back at January when you <coughs> just three victories or? Going one and five against the bottom three teams is if we just won one I of the games we're in. <laughs> Does that bother you knowing that it wasn't a quality? Of the quality no, because you know we sit back and say, well, we beat Chicago twice. You know, we beat some. You know, we we beat Washington. We beat some of the you know, some of the good teams anyway. Um, I look at it and say we lost thirty games. So, you know, just take two of those. Doesn't matter against two. Uh, this tough league. Um, you know, I know we lost to a couple teams that didn't make the playoffs, but we weren't the only teams those teams beat. <laughs> they won games as well. Um, it's it, it's not about the who's. It's about the streaks. And you just can't have multiple lost streaks. And we had a couple of those. And I mentioned last night the stretch after Thanksgiving and the stretch after New Year's. Um, those were the two that probably did us in. And if you go through a season and, you know, the maximum you lose are, you know, two in a row, you got a pretty good chance. That means you're doing a lot of winning uh, in between there, and that's what we didn't do. So I don't look at it as one particular game or teams or anything like that. It was we had to stop the bleeding we could have bled once, just couldn't do it twice. We did it, and it cost us. You mentioned there are some roster spots open for next year with the moves you made at the deadline and mm -hmm. probably a few of you did some of the expansion draft. Do you expect some, some sort of changes to a team that maybe didn't have any changes? Well, did you expect Braden Point to make the team last year? I don't think anybody did, and including Braden Point. And so, <clears throat> which meant there was a roster spot taking, and I'm taken, and I think, you know, it is the ability can that happen again? For sure it can. And um, so, you know, the, that was, again, part of the message to the team was, you know, nobody can take anything for granted here. Um, you, you've you got to put the work in. And now, you know, the excuse of, well, you've played so much hockey over the last few years, which these guys have, especially the guys that were in the American League, you know, back in 2012, like every summer's just, and then you throw in, World Cups and um, 
this is this is now a summer where we can rest, and that's not always a bad thing. Um, but we have to take advantage of it. And uh, and as I said, there's going to be a new group of guys coming to the training camp next year, and uh, they're all going to want to make the team. So we'll find, we'll, we will build the best team for the guys that are uh, deserving. You know, uh, a lot of teams have injuries, but how much did you guys miss Steven Stamkos? And what are your thoughts on Steven? Well, you got to feel f for. It's not that his career has gone bad. It's just he has spent a lot of it in the stands, and for you know, variety of of injuries, and you know that happens to players. I, there's, you know, the Coglianos of the world that have played, I don't know, 700 ga straight games. You marvel at that because it's uh, it's hard to do, and. You know, you look at our team, not one of our players played 82 games this year. And it's uh, it, it's it's hard to do. And, and it's unfortunate because of a player of Steven's caliber, you, you want him in, in the lineup. But it was, as I said, this is 20, you feel 20 guys on the ice. And um, he's, he's a big part of our team. But you can't sit there and say, well, we lost one guy, so that was it for our season. It's he would have helped. There's no question, uh, but there was we had multitude of guys get hurt, um, and we, it, as I said before, it was our team game wasn't good enough in the first half of the year, like we were in the second half of the year. And that's when you don't make the playoffs. It's not well. This guy was. It's all of us. We're all a part of this, and uh, you know myself included. And so it's we have to. I can't, you know, sit here and say, you know, the one thing about the stam or being out, you just feel for him because you know how much he wants to play, and that's that's the toughest part, uh, you know, losing your captain, and um, it, it's tough. So hopefully, you know, now this is a longer rest period for him, and you know, we'd expect him to be at full health when he comes in September. When you got the day-to-day -day status, were you surprised that he didn't make it out there towards the end of the season? Uh, well, no. I, I, the the day to day status was just based on, you know, his he was feeling better. Um, you know, you, he was day to day. Who knows? We made the playoffs. Maybe he would have been, had the opportunity to come back. Um, but it, we were we were pushing the envelope a little bit, and you know, you don't want to put him in harm's way, and that's the decision that was made, and you know, probably for the best. Well, I think he did really well. He ended up, you know, north of 50 points, and I thought he brought uh, st stability to our power play in the absence of, of Stammer. And I, I think there was a really good chemistry uh, with that group down the stretch. I think that was a big reason, or part of the reason, you know, we were having success. Um, he's grown, you know, he's growing into the game in all facets of it, and uh, he would. It's it, we need guys to step in for the Stamkoses, and he was one of the guys that stepped in and um, and you know helped us get to a point where we were now. What are you gonna do with the extra few months off? Oh, I don't know. I'm, I haven't even thought about that yet. Well, I was just gonna ask the that. family for sure. <laughs> Well, you, you, you do have to remember, the year I got hired, I came for those, you know, 15 games. I did. Well, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, they're set up to, to, to hopefully make the playoffs here and, and go on a run. Um, and that, you know, gives you an opportunity to go see the prospects, which I never get to see during the year. Um, and, you know, go back to the old stomping grounds, which is, you know, had, was only there for a year, but it was a great year. And. Um, but it, it's it's just time to take a step back, take a breath, analyze what happened this year, and and prepare for next year. And you know, the final thing we talked about in the room with the players is um, it started today. Like we can't look back and say training camps have started next year. It is today, and how you prep for today, both mentally and physically, will determine how we're going to start next year. And as a coaching staff, you know, it's sit back, take a day or two and then 
figure out how we're going to get better. I know there's something you guys as a coach at different things, or you make a lot of adjustments to different players and look at the injuries. And I'm sure it's hard territory for you. I mean, how do you, how do you change as a coach? Because <clears throat> Every year is different. Whether you win the Stanley Cup or you don't make the playoffs, you, you go through, there's different hurdles, there's different speed bumps. Um, you know, the, the, in, in the end, the, you know, we didn't make the playoffs as a team, and we're part of, of the team. Um, did we, you know, ultimately, you know, we're three points less than last year. Does that make us a, you know, as a failure season? No. We grew as a team. We grew as a coaching staff. Um, we had to change things a little bit to, you know, I guess help put us in a position to win games. And it worked out. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. And you bank the ones that did and use it as an experience and, and move on. And uh, it was growing for everybody. It was growing f for uh, us as an organization. We'll be better for it.